Good morning, everyone, and welcome, welcome to our best devices for Microsoft Team Rooms uh, webinar today. So let's get straight on uh, with the content. We've got a lot to cover today. Now, as we ready our businesses for the return to the office post COVID, we need to make sure our offices are ready to support our new Microsoft Teams video centric way of working. Even if you didn't believe in video meetings before, with all your internal and external meetings face to face, the genie is most certainly out of the bottle. And our job now is to make sure that our meeting rooms based teams meetings are as productive, uh, inclusive and professional as possible. And that inclusive word is so key there. I cannot emphasize enough that virtually every office meeting will include remote participants as many of us will continue to work from home in some capacity. Now, if you get it wrong, then the value to be gained from allowing your people to continue working from home could be lost. Where joining a meeting as a remote user could make you feel like you're on the outside looking in, making you feel like you're less involved compared to those sitting together in that physical meeting room in the office. So in this webinar, I'm going to focus on how best to kit out your meeting rooms to deliver a great edit proof. I want to say edit proof. I'm talking about Mark Flynn proof teams meeting experience wherever you are located. In this webinar, we're going to take a look at all the options you have for kitting out meeting rooms from the good enough because there's always room for that through to the full Microsoft Teams Rooms experience. I'm also going to share with you budgetary pricing for all of these uh, meeting room options that will enable you to put your own budgets together. We're going to empower you with, a, uh, with the cost information uh, to do that. And finally, in the gadget corner, my uh, colleague Adam Plevin will review the new and exciting Microsoft Surface Duo. Both Adam and I have been playing with this device for the last couple of weeks and we're absolutely excited about it. We absolutely love this device. Yeah, so we're excited about sharing our experience of the devices with you. Now in, in, the, in the session is going to be some live comment, uh, some live demonstrations Adam's going to uh, share with you, but also in mind is going to be a combination of slides and some videos uh, specifically put together for today's webinar. Anyway, now, let's get back to reality. It's very easy for you to fit out your own meeting rooms. Uh, and we see it happening a lot where customers will maybe get a PC, uh, glue a webcam to the top of it, install Teams and start using it as a Teams uh, meeting room space. In theory, yes, it'll work. Yeah, it's a bit scruffy, but it'll only work in the short term. And it always takes that first 10, 15 minutes of fumbling around trying to get things to work and you'll start seeing people avoiding those specific meeting rooms that exhibit that level of frustration with that wasted time. It's not professional and it creates a huge amount of stress. So what I want to do is walk through the four options available to you from good enough through to the gold standard for kitting out our meeting rooms. So let's start with one of the good enough options. Take, for example, you've got many of your meeting rooms kitted out with TV screens. Yes, you want to decommission those old PCs you have stacked uh, behind the monitors to drive the meeting, uh, but you want to sweat or continue to sweat the investment you've made in those rooms and carry on using the TVs you have on the wall. Now, in this scenario, what we always advise people to use is the Microsoft wireless adapter. It's only £75 a pop, but it's a great little device. Sits uh, behind uh, your, P uh, your uh, TV on the wall, your screen on the wall, and it simply connects HDMI yeah, uh, into one of the TV ports and it uses USB to power it. So plug it into one of the USB ports at the back of the monitor. It uses uh, Miracast. It's easy to use. You just simply hit the Windows K uh, together at the same time simultaneously on the laptop to select the TV screen and off they go. It provides great quality. You get minimal lag, even moving your mouse around. So even though it's a, it's, it's, it's a wireless connection, uh, 
that you're using. It's good enough, 75 pound a pop, get rid of all those uh, old uh, machines that you've been uh, using in those meetings for so long, yeah. So next, we have the collaboration bars. Now, these go up a little bit in price, so 75 pound, 750 pound, but we look at the value these devices bring. Today, we're gonna look at the Yealink VC210, but equal, we equally like the poly alternative. There's many or a number on the market that we deal with. Let's start by looking at where these might fit into your meeting room setup. This device is ideal for those huddle spaces or small meeting rooms, like the three meter by three meter kind of meeting rooms with up to five people in them. You know, it's pretty, pretty small rooms, but they're great. It fits in nicely where you want to have that professional team's meeting experience where previously you and your colleagues would have huddled around your laptop to join the call. You know, it's scruffy, not proud of it. Hey, we've got an alternative. Now, these devices are great because they're all in one. So let's let's bring this up here. So this is the Yealink uh, VC210. It's an all-in-one computer device. It's a compute device. It's a computer in its own right. It's running Android with a full Teams client, very much like what you've got on your laptop, on your on your iPhone, etc. You simply pop this on top uh, of your existing monitor that's on the wall. Yeah, it mounts just like any other external webcam, clamps to the top there, very easy. Also, it's got a screw there if you want to mount it separately. Simply pop it, pop it on top of the existing TV monitor. Uh, it's got, let's move on to the next slide. It's got a fixed uh, 4K camera on top. Yes, great camera. And it's got a 120 degree field of view. So it should pick up everybody, as you can see on the slide, pick up everybody uh, in that meeting room. It does auto framing, so it can follow people around the room. And you can see these uh, black kind of strips there. Well, they're actually micro-rays to support the auto framing. So they figure out where the sound is coming from to help figure out where to focus this 4K camera. You can run this device uh, wide ethernet or Wi-Fi. You can see there we've got a PoE port there. So it comes with an adapter, so it takes power as well as a wide ethernet or wireless, as I say. And it comes with a remote uh, desktop speaker as part of the bundle, which is the CP900 uh, desktop speaker. You can buy this separately, yeah, which is a great portable device or one for your meeting rooms, but it comes bundled with the VC210. Great sound quality on that. Really love it, use it all the time. So let's, what I wanna do now is bring it to life by looking at how we'd use that from a user perspective. So I want to share with you a little video I put together that really brings this to life. Now the most popular meeting room technology I get asked about when organizations want to kit their meeting rooms out with that full team's experience is the collaboration bundle. Today, we're going to look at the Yaling VC210. Think of the collaboration bar as your TV sound bar with a 4K camera, mics and, uh, and speakers built in. It is such a simple piece of technology to roll out. It's got a full Teams app installed, so exactly like your uh, laptop or your iPhone. It doesn't need a PC to run it, so there's no sneaky PC tucked down the back there. And all connections to it are via Bluetooth. So you haven't got those dangly cables that you're gonna trip up over. And you probably got already got a monitor in that meeting room. So it's already presenting uh, power and network connections. So we can piggyback off those connections and simply sit this device on top of the monitor. So it's a real cost effective way of tooling up your meeting rooms as, as Teams rooms. So I can drive the monitor, I can drive the meeting, sorry, by simply clicking the join button there or using the control that's provided. It is so simple. Uh, so I'm gonna join the meeting. I've joined the meeting. You can see the uh, the exactly the same Teams experience along the bottom there, yeah? And now I'm just waiting for my colleagues to join me physically in the room or to join into the meeting uh, remotely via Teams. 
this really is idiot proof technology. This really is a cost effective way of tooling up all your meeting rooms with a full team's experience. So let's move on to a killer feature called uh, proximity join. Now inside the collaboration bar, there's something called a Bluetooth beacon. And in your laptop or smartphone team's client, it has an auto discovery capability to find the beacon of all of these collaboration bars you've got in your meeting rooms. Now what that means is when I walk into a meeting room, the collaboration bar laptop and smartphone will detect each other. So let's see how this works out based on our use case using my iPhone. Now let's say uh, I've got a company pitch nine o'clock this morning, first thing, but I'm having a bit of a meltdown. The kids were playing up first thing, uh, which made me leave the house late. I got in bad traffic. I left my laptop at home and I didn't book a meeting room for this online pitch that I've got to do. Wow. But don't worry, I've got an answer for it. Now, what I've got to do first is find a meeting room. Yeah, I can do that online or I can physically see that this meeting room is free and available. Now, I'll walk into that meeting room with my iPhone. So I'm going to go to my calendar and find the meeting. I didn't book a me uh, meeting for it, but I did set up a meeting and everybody's been invited. So let's uh, let's say, let's show you this. Yeah, so you can see my calendar there. I've got a meeting there and I joined that. And if I scroll down, I can see down the bottom to join, but there's an arrow there. If I click on that arrow, it will say join and add a room. Can you see that? Join and add a room. Bang. iPhone auto discovers a Bluetooth beacon. Select that. Top right, click on join. And what's happening, there's a workflow going on where it's transferring the meeting from my iPhone to the collaboration bar. So the collaboration bar becomes the center of this meeting. And this device is turned into a simple presentation device. And what I want to do is uh, present that deck I've prepared for the meeting. So if I come down here, show my screen again, click on the three dots, Share. What I want to share? Well, I want to share a PowerPoint. So click on that. I'll select the deck. So I'm going to go with last month's webinar. Yeah. It's loading it up. You can see there it is. So this device yeah, is now purely presentation device. This is the center of the meeting. The colleagues can join me in that meeting or, go, or people can come in uh, online remotely. So I can then concentrate scrolling through the slides giving that pitch. That is so super easy. There's absolutely no problem with this. It's idiot proof. Yeah, there's nothing really you've got to get your head around. This is so super easy, so super clean to use. Brilliant. I love super easy. It's got to be super easy for me to use. OK. Let's move on to the next slide, which is the surface. I love this. This is proper science fiction stuff. This is. This is the Surface Hub 2S, which is a fantastic, yeah, all-in-one collaborative display. Now, the Surface Hub 2S comes in 50 or 85 inch versions, has the best collaboration and whiteboard experience possibly. And you can even make it mobile, so you can really sweat it by moving it from room to room. You'll see that in a second in the video. So let me bring it to life. Well, however many words I use, a thousand words to describe it, it will not bring this device to life. So again, let me share with you a little video put together to make it come to life. So let's take a quick look at the Microsoft Surface Hub 2S and look at the rich collaborative uh, meeting room experience you can deliver. The Microsoft Surface Hub 2S is a 50-inch 4K all-in-one Teams device that provides a 
fully immersive collaboration experience, providing that always on instant one touch idiot proof experience comes with a built in whiteboard camera with a 90 degree field of view with microphones that focus on people speaking in front of the devices. So capturing those sat around a table. The Surface Hub is easy for anyone to use with its one touch join capability. You can see the meeting invite on the screen when you enter the boardroom. Just go ahead with one touch to join that Microsoft Teams meeting. You might start in full screen mode just to say hi to everyone before you get down to business. I can then move on to the PowerPoint presentation, simply swiping back and forth through the slides using the inking capabilities of the Surface Hub to annotate the slides. If I've connected my laptop and I'm simply using the Surface Hub as a second screen, then the swiping back and forth and inking of the content will be reflected back on my laptop. I've now moved on to sharing a Power BI dashboard that I want to review with the team, which is a fully filterable and dynamic report. So I want to click on this dip to discuss how we might avoid that moving forward. I snip the screen, bring it into my whiteboard, drag it down here, and this is really the value of the whiteboard, being able to uh, on the fly, pull things in, resize them, scroll around and do some cool things on the whiteboard. Now I've asked the team to comment on the findings and you can see that someone on the call is now annotating the dip saying that it was a bank holiday weekend. Now let's move on to another example of using the Surface of 2S whiteboarding capabilities. Now this is our website that I'm brainstorming with the team. On the whiteboard, you can see several people on the call actively contributing ideas and content, moving things around and, add, and adding uh, sticky notes. I might decide I want to change the design by selecting this particular part of the web page and moving it out of the way. I might have mocked up a design on an analog whiteboard and taken a photo of it on my iPhone. It's very easy for me to move this photo up into the spot where we previously had the other design. I can adjust it a little bit resize it, slide over here and ink it up by tapping the little magic wand icon here. This picture is then transformed into digital ink, allowing you to edit it, allowing you to blend it in as if it was part of the original uh, Surface Hub created uh, design. In summary, the Surface Hub 2S, be that the 50 or 85 inch, provides an easy to use, rich, immersive, collaborative experience for all users be they in that physical office or remote. Wow. Now for me, yeah, I love it. It really gives you that Tom Cruise minority report experience. How cool is that? Yeah, everybody should have one. Only one or possibly two because they're quite expensive, but they do add so much value uh, to that kind of collaborative experience. Anyway, Let's move on to Microsoft Teams Room Devices or MTRs, which we typically use to fit out your more larger meeting rooms. Now, MTRs are modular by design, consisting of, you can see a, a selection of the years, so this is what they consist of. So we've got the compute unit, typically an i5 device. Yeah, uh, we've got, what else have we got? We've got uh, mics, yeah, so they might be uh, desktop mics, for example, or, or equally ceiling, ceiling mounted. Uh, we've got the camera, might be fixed, or PTZ with five or 12 times optical zoom, for example. We've got our speakers, and we've got a console which sits at the top of the desk to drive that meeting room. Now, I've got one final video in this, in this, in this webinar to share with you. It only lasts a minute. It's a Microsoft video, it's not one of mine but it really does encapsulate why or how we can deliver on that need to turn our kind of analog meeting rooms, which you currently got yeah, into full Teams meeting rooms, which gives you that inclusive, collaborative, natural, professional feel. So let's run this final video. It only lasts a minute, but it does nail it for me. Cortana, start my meeting. Joining your 2.30 p.m. Previously, people in the room generally had a better meeting experience than people joining from other places. Cortana, join my next meeting. Now, as some people are returning to the workplace, Microsoft Teams and Teams devices can help make the meeting experience feel more alike and more inclusive for everyone. 
The intelligent speaker for Microsoft Teams Rooms uses AI to recognize people's voices, so the transcript not only shows what was said, it shows who said it. That way, people who aren't in the room can easily follow along, and anyone can catch up on anything they missed. The raise hand feature lets people know you have something to say, which makes it easier to participate in the conversation. And Intelligent Capture helps people who aren't in the room see more of what's happening in it. So while we may not all be in the same place, Microsoft can help us feel more like we are. So much going on in that video. Uh, but I think it's, it's great, you know, things I'd pick out from that, because there is so much going on in that. We've got the intelligent camera, so people not, uh, sorry, we've got the in-room uh, intelligent speakers, sorry, uh, which which allows us to deliver that kind of fully attributed transcript. So even for those people outside the meeting room, yeah, if somebody's speaking off camera, how do you, how do you know who's speaking, yeah? Uh, so with this and what they're saying, so with this, we can actually get a fully attributed transcript of the meeting. So it's very powerful for people not in the room. We've also got intelligent camera, which we saw there. So again, really great for those not in the room people, because if we're uh, clustered around a classic whiteboard, if we're using the intelligent camera, so we can in the room dodge around what they write on the board and see fully what's happening. But for the person remote can't. So you know, turning that kind of content on that analog whiteboard is fantastic. Just a couple of examples. Now, the vendors we work with, uh, such as Yealink, Poly and Crestron, provide everything as an all in one bundle. Previously, it was a bit of a sign. So you'd have to pick a mix. Uh, you'd have to have like a degree in VC and so on. And now, these bundles make it much easier for you to budget and buy the right kit. So let's take a quick look at the pricing of the MTR kit for the various rooms you might have. So what we've got here classically, small through the large rooms. Uh, we've got a small room for like five people, three meters by 4.5 meters through to a large kind of boardroom setups. Uh, so large 4.5 to 8.5 meters, typically around about 20 people. Yeah. And let's look at the prices. So I've got to price this using the Yealink uh, MVC series, but we could have equally done it with Poly or the others, uh, Crestron and so on. So you can see for all the active kit, which we talked about before, the compute unit, console, speakers, mics, etc., uh, and, and the camera, uh, all that active equipment for a small room to kit it out as an MTR of 1,900 pound medium, 2,225 large rooms, 2,670. The difference is from the small, you get a fixed camera, like what we got with the uh, VC210, where we're moving into that kind of PTZ camera uh, with five, and in the large room, 12 kind of optical zoom. So you more sophisticated, richer technology, but that's the difference really between the price points. Still the same kind of bundle of kit in terms of compute unit console, blah, blah, blah. So the beauty of this is, you know, it, it allows you to say, okay, so I've got three small rooms and four large rooms. You can quickly yeah, put your budgetary pricing together. Now, only if you have some particularly tricky rooms that might have foldable or glass walls that impact the acoustics, will we start getting into bespoke designs with you to ensure we deliver the right uh, user experience in those rooms. Now, don't forget, you don't have to go with these package solutions. We have customers who like the nice, sleek, uh, experience that the Logitech tap offers, but want a more immersive audio experience. And in those cases, we might install a sure kind of ceiling mic arrays, for example. At the end of the day, it's always about budget. Don't forget, these are Teams room solutions. If you use other VC platforms such as Zoom or WebEx, you won't be able to use the solutions with those platforms. So that's something you might want to consider. A big benefit of some of the MTR vendors we work with that some of the, the, the kind of products provide U, uh, UBS, USB pass through on some of the models. So a user can bring their laptop into the meeting, drive a Zoom meeting, and then we'll flip back to being a Teams meeting uh, later. So let's review the options we have. The fact is, we do need to transform our meeting room spaces to mirror how we'll work post COVID lockdown. And we've looked at four options. We've got a quick wins, which might be the wireless adapter and collaboration bar without having to rip up those rooms and really allowing us to sweat what we've got. 
And then we might have some surface hubs in there, yes, scattered in there, especially for our flagship meeting rooms. And then we come uh, to uh, the, uh, the, 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 the MTRs, which we talked about uh, starting at £1,900 budgeting wise uh, for those uh, meeting rooms. And I think it's you know just just briefly now this is a classic MTR room. We've got dual screens which have been driven by the kind of uh, MTR console there where we've got a video task for all those attending on the left screen sharing content there. You can see the kind of PDZ cameras and speakers and desktop mics uh, there and we might have on this side uh, the Surface Hub 2S or the intelligent camera with a traditional whiteboard. You'll see As ever, it just comes down to budget. For one of our customers, you know, multinational organization, every user has been issued with a laptop so they can uh, they can work, they've got complete flexibility to work from home or in the office. And we've stripped out all of the meeting room PCs that we, uh, that we use to drive those meeting rooms and replaced them with Microsoft wireless adapters. So we don't get any of that nonsense of spending the first 50 minutes running around trying to get the meeting rooms to work. We've also kitted those, kitted out the flagship boardrooms for each of the four international offices with MTR room as MTR rooms, along with a service of 2S to provide them with a rich collaborative experience. And the plan is over time, we'll fit out all of the meeting rooms with full MTR. Again, all comes down to budget. Hopefully, You've got enough insight from today to look at how you might transform your meeting rooms. You've got enough there to go on and start putting your own budgets together. With that said, I'm going to hand over to Adam to take us through a review of the Microsoft Duo. Hello, uh, I'm Adam. My role at Bedrock is to act as the IT director for companies that don't have one but need that function. Today, however, I'm here in my capacity as a tech geek. I'm the sort of tech geek that likes to try and stay one step ahead of the crowd. I was running convertible laptops and smartphones, but they worked out what to call them. And this brings us to the Surface Duo, which for now at least has the title of phone, but that's the closest name to give it, but it could always change. The phone is based on Qualcomm's uh, two or three year old Snapdragon 855 processor with six gig of RAM and either 128 or 256 gig of storage. But it's no slouch. Um, however, its party piece is a pair of 1800 by 1350 5.6 inch displays. Uh, let me switch to it so you can see it. Where's my mouse going to go? Yeah. Um, I should point out that notable omission, omission from the specification sheet is there's no NFC, so no tap to pay, and there's no wireless charging, which is a shame. Um, but because they've left those things out, uh, this thing is super slim. If I try and hold it up, you can see how really slim that is. You can see the USB port, which is there for charging, to appreciate how slim this thing is. Um, and the other bit that's kind of an oddity is it's short and fat as opposed to tall and slim, which is the, the trend for most phones nowadays is to be tall and thin rather than short and fat. I don't know how well that shows on the camera. Um, but I've been using this as my primary device. Um, Mark sent it to me. I threw my SIM card into it. I've been using it as my primary device for a fortnight now, and I've had no issues at all. And I am, as Mark said at the beginning, loving it. Um, the screens flip back and forth, um, as you've seen me doing, um, by way of a very, very funky hinge. Um, there is a gap in between the screens here, so all the cabling, all the networking, all the wiring goes through these two hinges, which is really cool. Um, you can use this device in many different ways, so if we flip it back to back, it's a little bit thicker than a standard phone, but at the same time, you've got a heck of a device there. Um, when you flick it back, back to back, only one screen comes on. It's only got the one camera, but it's clever enough. If I'm holding it with a camera facing me, it goes, you want to take a photo of yourself. If I turn it round, it then switches this screen on and shows me what's coming out the camera the other side. Really clever. Um, 
the the modes as it were is this kind of standard phone mode with just one screen on you then put it into a tent mode which if I, you can see there it's asking me which screen i want to use and it puts on one screen you can have it completely flat in which case it powers on both screens or one of my favorites is actually i put it a kind of a book and it becomes really nice to hold in one hand um, and operate with the other so let's power it on and see what it looks like inside if i press the power button i could also have just touched the fingerprint sensor on the side there and it opens up let me stick it in the stand so i'm not moving it around too much for you hopefully it'll focus in quite nicely um inside it is a tweaked version of Android 10 and ignoring the dual screen functionality, it's not got masses of modification from a standard Android device. Um, the biggest modification is the way that Android um, Microsoft have integrated 365 in, into its system and they've done a really good job of it. Um, if we start all the way on the left hand side as I look at it, there is a page called your feed. And this ties in with um, my calendar, so my Outlook, my tasks, my sticky notes, all the apps that I've used, all the documents I've used. And it's just all there in one page, in one screen, all the information that you could possibly want is there. Um, and it's really good. Um, Microsoft have done a bunch of work with um, their applications to make things work. So if I open up Teams, give it a second, it opens up my last chat that I had running um, and it might throw a wobbly now because I've got it in aircraft mode, but it opens up on one screen. If I pick up, pick up the window, I can drag it to a second screen. Typical, typical. Oh, how annoying. There we go, I can drag it to the second screen, but what I can also do is I can do that and it drags it across both screens. So now this is much more like a desktop experience where I have my list of conversations down one side and I have the conversation I've got selected on the right hand side. This works exactly the same for the majority of the Android um, applications. So for OneNote, for instance, I can open OneNote. If I drag it across so it's on both windows, I can see my um, selection of notebooks and pages there and I can see my um, my scribbled note on that side and this is the other bit Microsoft Surface Pen works on the screen so I can scribble on the screen which I find invaluable because I'm one of these people that I like to scribble notes when I'm having conversations with people um, and, and that is really really good um, so the uh, other thing it can do, of course, is it can run multiple apps at the same time. So if I open, um, let's have a look, if I reopen Outlook or um, OneNote and I open Google Photos, it's open one on either screen and I can switch things across if I want to put that over there and I'm going to open up um, something else instead. Um, tips. I know. <laughs> but you can see that it opens up multiple things on the screen at the same time to um to sit with that they have this concept of app pairs so instead of having a single app icon you have a double app icon if i click on that it opens up OneNote and teams at exactly the same time and puts one on either screen and i can configure them up um, any which way that i like and you can see on this screen here i've got a page full of them so i could just podge a button and it jumps onto it and that includes things that aren't optimized so youtube for instance um together with my microsoft news app um which again aren't show me anything because i'm not connected to the internet um so yeah it's really good if the um if the application isn't um configured then it works really well as well um the only limitation if you like is that you can't run two video type apps at the same time so in conclusion it's a great device does it have flaws yes the lack of nfc and the price would stop me from buying one for myself but who's know what will come with version 2 which of course microsoft are already working on so for that i shall hand you back to mark thank you adam that, that was that, i just love that device as i said we've both been playing around with it and uh, if it 
Wow, just the difference between an iPhone 8 and that is just glorious. Uh, on the same level of the kind of transformational as the Surface Hub 2S, I think is just glorious. Anyway, that's that's the that's the webinar done. Uh, if you uh, if if you want any help with uh, transforming your meeting rooms to deliver that kind of proper full on uh, Teams room experience, but you know, but but budget constraints allow, please get in contact. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to work with you. Uh, and if there's anything else in the future webinars you'd like to see covered, I would love that kind of feedback as well. So rather than relying on what excites me, uh, it'd be great to see what value you'd like to get from future webinars. With that said, great to see you on today. Speak to you soon. Cheers. Bye bye.